winter's coming. It's fall, it's our favorite time of the year. Trees are starting to change. The elk are bugling. They just started yesterday, at least over here, where we can hear them. Man, you gotta love life, right? What's the, what's the greatest thing about life? Honestly, slow down for a second, think about it. Because everybody right away says money. It's not. I mean, we all need money to survive, right? You gotta eat, you gotta live somewhere. Maybe you get to have something that's yours. Maybe something special if you make a little more money. But what really is the importance of life? You know, there's nothing I enjoy more in sports day. Uh, of course, I get it from my family, but from people is kindness. Decency. Respect. Meeting people of integrity, character, honor. People that really know it. And those people that have it, they never talk about it. They just show it. You can feel it in them. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't you tired of walking around talking to people who are so fake, so phony, and have beliefs and things that you don't believe in because they're trash? I'm sorry. We're in trouble in this nation. I guess the world's in trouble. You know, I guess in the end, the whole thing's going to fall apart and there's nothing we can do about it. But if it was just me and my wife, I'd say, okay, hell with it. I hide in the woods. But I got a nine year old. He's my life. So I post these videos embattled with a multi-billion dollar industry that doesn't like us or share our stuff anymore. You know, I'd like to talk a little bit about that this morning. One of our videos has gone viral again, but not on our page. Yeah, if you go to, uh, I talked about it, I said made a little post the other day, Medal of Honor winner Dakota Meyer shared our video unfortunately he gave us no credit for it and that was when we were just putting out lots of videos to try and show people how important it is to spend time with your children and how children can shoot guns and be great with them and be safe with them anyway on his page our videos now uh, reached 9.1 million people as a matter of fact in the last 40 hours it's reached another 1.5 million people in the last 40 hours it's been shared 32,000 times in the last 40 hours and I look at that and I go, then why is it less than 100,000 people on our page? You see, because for some reason, Facebook sees us as a threat, my son and I. See, we were reaching 7 million people a week when they shut us down in January of 2018. Now we struggle to stay, stay afloat. I keep posting these videos and I ask myself, why? Why should I? You know, I can spend time with my family and spend less time on the camera. But I've spent my whole life serving people. I really have as a policeman. I risked my life. I've been shot at several times, three times directly. And I don't know how many times indirectly as a policeman trying to save other people. Nobody ever shot at me in my personal life. I'm no hero. I'm just a man. But it's my life of service. I tell people, if people are kind and they say, hey, thanks for your service, I say, I appreciate your kindness. But a life of service is its own reward. I believe that. But what's happened... What's happened to America? What has happened? And I don't know what's going to happen with their page. I'm tired of the fight. I really am. I'm tired of it. How is it that my video is reaching so many people with no credit to me? Or to us? I shouldn't say to me, to us. To our company. I mean, I can't believe America was founded that way. Do you really think that everybody had to make all the money in the beginning? In community, right, small communities in the 1800s or 1700s, everybody had to survive. Everybody had to work their trade and share and take care of one another. And now everybody just wants all the money. This censorship thing is bigger than uh, ripping you off from being able to see the truth about everything. I'm just one person. Our company is just one company. My son and I, what we do, we're just one little tiny speck of sand on the beach. So how much information are you not getting? <clears throat> that should bother people. You don't have to worry about us. God will always provide for us. But gee whiz, it, it sure be nice if people that are, are benefiting from what we provided that we'd at least get credit. Isn't that a form of decency? Anyway, you know, why do you got a gun? Have you ever been asked that question? 
This is my little SIG MPX 9mm pistol. He's a groovy man. I'm always switching different lights. I'm always testing them different ways. These are really fun. You know what I tell people when they say, hey, why do you like guns? Why do you have to have a gun? You know what you just tell them? Just tell them you like it. Tell them the truth. Everybody's so damn defensive about their guns. They're like, well, I've got the right, and I... Tell the truth. You don't, you don't have a gun because you got the right. You have a gun because you like them. You love them. You love what it provides you. Just talk the truth. The truth is a beautiful thing, man. It really is, right? I am the way, the light, and the truth. The truth. Just tell it. Why do I have a gun? I love them. I've always loved them. i got to have been shooting guns since I was seven years old. Pretty soon that's going to be 50 years. And there's a lot of things that they mean to me, but most of all, I just love them. I love to shoot them. I love to have them. I love to look at them. And that's all right. Because that's why people eat food that's bad for them and drive cars that are too fast and, and jump off buildings with parachutes and ride bucking Bronx. They just love doing it. And that's okay. And guns are no different. So the next time somebody says, why do you have to have a gun or why do you have a gun or what? Just tell them the truth. You don't have to justify it. You don't. We need to stop feeling like we have to justify. Only when the government attempts to take them do you go, now I'll stand. And that's when you justify the reason you stand. Besides that, just tell people you love them. At least the guns is, at least the guns is what you love. Oh, I got a goofy thing on this doggone phone. But you know, the last thing I want to talk about is decency. And I don't know what's happened with the country. What, why aren't people decent anymore? I just, I can't bear people that just think of themselves. You drive down the road, people just thinking of themselves. You walk down a hallway, people just think of themselves. Decency, respect, kindness, honor, integrity, character. What's happened? You're just like the first thing I'm talking about. How do you have a viral video and not give credit to the source? What is that? What is that? But you know what's interesting? I changed the picture on my on our Vantac page. It's Wyatt and I with our pistols drawn. It was a picture that my wife took when we were in a training session a couple years ago, and I just changed it and put a our Vantac logo on it. And some guy on our page said, eh, "Sorry, but that's cheesy. Sorry, you gotta tell the truth." And it upset me. <laughs> so I responded back and I said, "You know how is that?" constructive criticism. What is it you're trying to say? And he wrote back, oh, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. I'm just saying I don't like it, but I love your content. And I said, well, of course you love my content. I'm a world-class firearms and tactical instructor. And I give what I give freely because I want people to be safe. Of course you love my content, but how about decency? You see, I don't really care what people say to me. People want to get on my page and be rude or ignorant. Then I'll ban you. I ain't got the time for it. You want to argue with me about something? You want, to, you want to talk about something? Man, I love it. You want to be ignorant and rude? I'll ban you. And then he said, well, he wrote back, and you're making a mountain out of molehill, and now I'm insulted by the way you're handling this. I wasn't rude. I didn't write any cuss words. And I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you something. When my son might look at something like that's cheesy, and it's his idea, it was his idea, I don't let people crush my child. I don't. I don't care what you try to do to me. I'm a broken down old man, but I suggest you don't. But I don't let anybody crush my family. You see, if my nine-year-old has an idea, I don't let people say something that's indignant and rude. Let me tell you something. Telling something something's cheesy about them is not a compliment. So I banned him. I banned him from the page. And I said, listen, I look at your page. I see you have children and a wife. You look like you have a nice family. Why would you do that? And then he gets rude with me on my page. You know, it's interesting. We, we do what we do for free because we want to help people. And then when we had the opportunity, somebody came to us and said, you know, your page is crazy. You're reaching 7 million people a week. You can make money off that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what a great thing. We could do great things and, and help people and make money from sponsors of things that I like. Anyway, this is a great thing. And then that came a crushing blow because Facebook, for some reason, didn't like my son and I, which is a shame. I suppose if he was transgender, which is a word he doesn't even know, and I hope he never even, even learns it. If I had a transgender son, he'd be a hero. They discriminated against me for that. I'd be a millionaire just from the lawsuit. But if I'm just an American, just a father and a son that loves America and wants to share the ability to stay safe and 
and show how important a bonding, loving relationship is between a parent and a child, well, doggone it, we just don't want any of that. You know, I once heard something. I'm going to close with this. I once heard something. I was taking a shower. My gosh, it was 25 years ago or something. Christian radio was on, which, my gosh, if you don't listen to Christian radio, you need to listen to it even if you don't believe in God. Within time, God will be right in your heart. But a pastor got on there and he said, you know, if you want to make the world a better place, simply make yourself a better person. And it's true. You see, the power of the country, <coughs> excuse me, the power of the country is you. I mean it. It's you. You see, because if you make yourself a better person, if you become a person of character, you stop your flaws from coming out. If you are convicted like God convicts us to be better, if you become a better person alone, other people will see it and they'll appreciate it and perhaps they'll do it too. Imagine a country of people that believe more in community and decency and kindness and respect who wanted each other to succeed instead of just themselves. Imagine a country like that, because I believe that's how this country was founded, because people had to fight and sacrifice to make it here. And those strong people made a great country. And now people are becoming weaker every day and losing the most important aspect of all of us, and that is ourselves. You're important. God loves you. Be decent, be kind, have character honor, integrity. I'm telling you, I tell my son every day that there is nothing, no greater gift to yourself than to have character, to not lie, to stand for what's right regardless of the cost. And if you do that, and I do that, and my son does that, and your children do that, that's what's going to make the country great again. God loves you. Enjoy your day.